most toughest job that you we, you know wanted to get into retail for, for a short time we were private sector partners for sapa sir then we came up with this idea of having independent retailers on their brand called star united but i think we didn't get everything right we made a lot of losses a lot of problems the board said look this is not going forward and i i had to agree with them it wasn't you know we, we were way in what we knew and um we had to close it uh we tried to absorb as many people into our existing businesses we had to let some go but you know we lost we lost money um and i i for me it was also a, a personal challenge it was something that i was very involved in and um, I, i felt you know I, i'd let everyone down so you know we fashioned this whole our whole concept was fashion and this uh, after spa uh, and just had this very random conversation a few weeks later i i he calls me and says look if you are interested i have a telephone call with the the mark the, div- the director of development of spa would you like to talk to him and you know that was then became from a journey of absolute despondency suddenly i, I had this conversation and that what then became the, you know that despondency became an opportunity to really create this new venture that you know it, that that was it, it took several years um from the time we actually spoke to spa to actually come here because that, that was having really burnt our fingers in retail we wanted to make sure that if we were going to try it for a third time it was going to work and, and wish you a very happy new year so sometimes good things start with a lot of challenges and it's always the case but it will never stop us from what we do especially when it comes to learning as happy sri lanka we have been continuing our learning in the best way regardless of all the challenges that we went that we faced so with that let me warmly welcome our uh, guest of the day today who is on the planet who will be having a very official introduction very soon but to start with let me warmly welcome all of you in the platform and all the guests who are joining us from different parts of the world all the university members who are joining us from different universities especially from uk australia and of course thailand while welcoming them let me now invite our chairman mr bandule godage chairman of happy sri lanka to welcome you and to share his warm expressions chairman over to you thank you uh, uh, kaushali good evening uh, i think uh, you made my life easier once again so uh, today actually the introduction no need uh, such a eminent person that we are going to join with you uh, basically is my duty is to officially welcome her on behalf of our ceo and the board of directors and the, and, and all the staff uh, very uh, humbly and very respectfully welcome you shia here for today you know in spite of your busy schedule and uh, you know forgetting all uh, your business engagement that you are here with us today for the betterment of uh, students life uh, basically so because all the students are lined up to have right interaction with you to get because which which during our school time we didn't have this sort of opportunity to get into the business leaders directly intervene with them and you know actually that is the one of the key objectives created by dr rohant to give the right opportunity to mingle with or, or or direct intervention with the opinion leaders of sri lanka so you know apit as a quality education we we know for a fact that uh, we believe that not only the academic excellence we want to be leaders for the society so uh, we will ensure the academic excellence or, or yeah, their degree but i don't think that is sufficient uh, for the society is only a degree so that is why we are back with this uh, ceos forum to 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 get the maximum uh, experience and uh, knowledge sharing uh, among with our our students so firstly uh, i want to thank all the ambassadors excellencies Uh, the the overseas uh, participants and the and the and the participants who are in all platforms joining us today 
i urge that uh, please uh, use the get the maximum use of uh, our our chief guest appearance uh, and and text your all uh, required uh, questions and everything in in platform or, or, or text so I, I i appeal all my students to get the maximum out of madam shia vikramasinghe so so uh, that's it from my end very warmly welcome you once again thank you very much uh, for being with us here thanks a lot our story started with a biscuit called care which paved the way for a journey of food with purpose that can make a difference in our world from farm to table our food journey creates meaningful growth in communities across our value chain and in every part of sri lanka our network of 13000 plus conventional and organic farmers grow the greens grains fruits coconuts and spices that are used across our brands and we support our farmer family to grow for the future CBS dedicated agriculture teams on the field train and support our farmers to improve quality and yield and adopt agriculture best practices to reduce our impact on our planet through our products and our brands we're helping to build better eating habits addressing community food needs and giving every home good food choices for every meal and snack in between slowly changing and automating our processes to its cleaner production and taking strides big and small to conserve our resources for the future this also means taking responsibility for the waste we create and taking measures to reduce recycle redesign and find sustainable alternatives towards a circular economy Through our everyday actions, our brands have become a catalyst to create diverse, inclusive, healthy, and happy communities. We are supporting better livelihoods and strong, diverse partnerships that are geared for growth. We are empowering women in our value chain. stereotypes to uplift communities with disabilities. We want all Sri Lanka's children to have equal access to education. So we are working to prevent early school dropouts and to give our rural villages better access to growth. There's a lot to do, but we are united in our commitment and our purpose to make food that truly enriches lives. for a sustainable future so we have with us today uh, i think one of the most eminent business personalities uh, let me introduce um the group managing director um of the cbl group uh, who has um the manufacturing operations in confectionery cereals soya coconuts and fruits and a strong market leadership in sri lanka in several categories with its brands such as manchi ritzberry revelo lanka soy samposha and sera the group has two manufacturing plants in bangladesh and ghana and exports their range of products to over 55 countries CBL group is also the Sri Lankan partner for SPA international operate markets supermarket chain in Sri Lanka under license um Mr Vikram Singh um uh, joined Ceylon Biscuits Limited in 1991 as a food technologist and worked in various capacities in the company and the group she was invited to join the board in 1996 and she sits on all the subsidiary boards of the group She is also the founder and the managing director of Modern Pak Lanka Private Limited and the director of JFI Packaging Private Limited. Presently, 
a member of the EDB Advisory Committee on Processed Food and Beverages, Council of the Employers Federation of Ceylon, Board of Amcham Sri Lanka, the Board of United States Sri Lanka Fulbright Commission, and an alternate member of Sun Movement Executive Committee. She has been a member of the main committee of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce since 2013 and was a board member of the institution's first board from 2015 to May 2017. A MSc degree in food chemistry from Purdue University, USA, and a BSc in food science and industry from Kansas State University, USA. She has an interest in functional and healing properties of food and has studied extensively on this subject. She is also an old girl of Benedict School in the UK and Ladish College in Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, it's actually an honor to introduce Shia Vikramasinghe, the group managing director of CBL Group. Shia, um, a few words from you before we uh, move to a, a few questions that has come from different people. Over to you, uh, ma'am. Um, thank you, Rohansa, and thank you, everyone, for, for having me here. I, I feel very honored. I mean, I, I think I feel a bit embarrassed with all those things you were saying. Um, look, we are we are in a, a very challenging environment um, as a country, as an economy, which then you know filters down to to industry and to everyday people. And um, I, I think we all need to get together. You know, we, we can't be woeful. Um, whatever the situation, we all need to rally around and, and find solutions for ourselves. And I, I hope this discussion will, will be useful for that. Thank you very much. So, Shia, all sorts of questions are coming on board. And um, I let me take one by one. Uh, the first question that's coming is, um, is um, how do you see the current context of where we operate uh, in, in, in Sri Lanka in the current context of the to total macro environment? Um, what's your view, uh, ma'am? Look, we all know that uh, this is really one of, I, I think, the most um, challenging um, environments that we have to do business and as a country we've had our share of challenges whether it's been you know having um, a war at our, our doorstep um, and you know we've had economic issues from time to time but this really I, I think is quite unprecedented so yes um, we are facing you know a forex crisis in the country which is translating to supply chain issues for, for essential goods. And I, I think as stakeholders of this economy, um, the private sector also needs to step in and see, yes, we have challenges. We are not, you know, have our supply chains are disrupted, but what is it that we can do um, to ensure that we can provide goods and services to our communities? So I look at it, you, you know, when we run a business, we are always faced with challenges and we need to come up with possible scenarios and, and, and that's what we're doing now. So we, we are looking at what if scenarios because there's a lot of uncertainty. We're not quite sure um, and we hope, you know, that our government will come up with a plan to bring some stability. So we are in, in a bit of a hole, but I, I don't believe we are deep down in a hole and that there is um, room for us to, to come out of this. And we all need to work towards finding that solution. Shia, I mean, thank you, uh, Shia. I mean, it, it's, it's really great to have a leader of your caliber uh, looking, that, looking at this as a challenge. Uh, and, I, and I yet remember how, uh, you know, during the National Council of Economic Development days, uh, you know, we sit together, we do the plan, and then, you know, going back home, you have a bomb that has gone off. And the next thing you know is that, uh, you know, about 100, 150 people have died. That was between the times of 2006 and 2009. And then of course, as you very rightly said, we have, we have come back 
to 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 fight hard and to be really really competitive uh, so i think what you say is so true uh, that you know there are challenges that happen um, which which actually brings out the best in you so uh, a question is coming which says that you know uh, your your company is such a respected company very strongly into being uh, a very much into a um, uh, a local company local heritage but then you know given the current background that is there uh, uh, just like every other company you all are looking at investing overseas also uh, how, how do you see this um, in 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 light with uh, uh, with, uh, with with the current situation look um in our company is 54 years old um, we started out in confectionery and we brought based our manufacturing and marketing to various food items we've gone into retail and in, in sri lanka i, I think we, we we are large stakeholders we're large stakeholders in supply chain we work with about 13000 farmers um, you know we a lot of people you know, a lot of people associate us with Manchi, which is really our flagship um, brand. But um, quite apart from Manchi, we, we are involved in a, a host of other food production, um, right from supply chain. So we, we get involved in things like, you know, propagating seeds. When we launched um, Kome rice crackers, for example, um, we worked with the agriculture department to introduce new varieties of rice that was more conducive for this sort of production. So we do a lot of groundwork and we have been growing, you know, in this last 54 years, we've been growing, we've been expanding um, what we're doing. And in Sri Lanka, in all our brands, we are market leaders in the categories we are. Um, and our foray overseas actually did not start recently, but we've been looking at it. I mean, we, we started, the first step was exporting. Um, but then when you want to reach markets and the, the potential for brands that are coming out of developing countries is actually to look at other emerging markets. And in, in like Sri Lanka, many of those markets have similar problems. They have currency instability. Um, they have high duties, um, import duties. So if you really want to uh, develop a brand, and, and that's what we're doing, we're trying to develop a local Sri Lankan brand globally. We, we need to have feet on the ground. And, and that's why we're looking. Um, so the three markets that we are actively pursuing is um, India, Bangladesh, and Ghana. Um, we have factories in Bangladesh and in, in Ghana. And that, that is purely to, to be competitive in those countries, it is no longer viable to export from Sri Lanka and we have substantial volumes um, that are being generated um, and, and a brand that is being developed in these countries. Yeah, uh, what is your honest advice that you would give a youngster uh, because you have so much of exposure sitting on MCHAM, sitting on so many boards of the export development boards, on chamber of commerce, uh, you know, you're not only just running a, 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 a large local company, but you know, you are in a more of a macro kind of a perspective. Uh, so uh, we have, you know, in Staffordshire University, you have about 400 youngsters studying for master's programs in different, uh, uh, different kinds of years. So, what is your honest advice here to the youngsters? Um, look, I, I think um, to use a cliche, actually, if you look at a painting, um, we, we all start with the canvas. You know, some of, the, some of our canvases has a little bit more um, depth in it when we start out. But at, at the end of the day, in life, we get tools. So, you know, and how I look at it is an, an MBA, I have a master's. These are all tools that we collect in our life journey. But you know, in, a, in, in a world that is um, that much more competitive, where you know, boundaries are that much harder to cross and to climb, um, 
you will really need to harness everything you have. But most of all, I think to succeed, it is, it is the drive you have within you. You can have all the education, you can have all the opportunity, but if you don't have that passion that makes you want to do something great, I think it's harder. And I, I believe the people we see who have you know, succeeded in, in globally and in Sri Lanka, it's not necessary that all of them come with you know, a lot of education or, or actually a lot of privilege. It's, it's just that they've had an idea, they've had a passion, which they, they drive forward. So to go back to your canvas, you know, you have your tools, you have to have a technique, you, you, you know, what do you want to do? Um, what is it that you want to, to make a mark on? And then, then you have to have that drive to make it happen. So my advice to everybody, you know, if you want to paint that beautiful picture um, in your life, you have to look inward first. You, you need to see what excites you. And are you willing to give what it takes to, to, to make something more in whatever you're doing? Um, so I think you always have to start at yourself. Look at yourself first. Yeah, you, you are an expert. I mean, you're, you studied to be a food technologist and um, you went on to uh graduate um and i mean you got the education overseas with fantastic exposure uh do do you do do you know at that moment of time did you ever think that you'll be a managing director of one of the top blue chips in this country or is it that you did that because you really love this area of food science so you know we are all on a journey and um Initially, I, I was kind of trusted in, in this area. Um, and, um, but when I started studying um, in the US, um, when, when I started studying, and, and I actually got interested in the subject and I, I opted to do a master's. Uh, that wasn't the plan originally. My, my the expectation was that I come back and join the business, but I stayed on and did the master's. And I actually got accepted to the PhD program um, at Purdue. And what I decided was, I spoke to my professor and said, let me take a break for a year and let me go back because I've been away from, from home for a while. And, 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 you know, you come to crossroads in your life. Everyone has these. And, and this is one of it. I, I could have become an academic. I really enjoyed, actually, the academic part of it. But when I came back to Sri Lanka, I, I joined the business. Um, I got married. So I put, on, put down roots here. And um, then it was a, you know, that, that was where my, my journey took me. And, and um, what I found was my technical knowledge was helpful, but I, really what, what, what I really found, and uh, Mrs. Rohini Nanyakar told me this uh, once, you know, in, in countries like Sri Lanka, you, you have so many possibilities um, to make a difference in people's lives. And quite frankly, what drives me um, at what I do at work is you know quite apart from it's not running a business but actually the ability to to touch and improve people's lives and communities and it actually goes back to the start of Ceylon biscuits when I found the chairman started this I mean he came up with this idea of a high protein biscuit um, that was introduced as a midday snack you, you know I, I think the core value of our business I mean I, I don't want it to sound cringy, but quite honestly, that really is what um, gives me a lot of drive and um, pushes me to do more. I, I mean, you know, we are no longer only a confectionery business. We're such a wide, we do such a lot of different work. Um, from big to small, you know, we, we have projects where we are propagating bees in communities. It, it, it's good for the environment. It's good for community. And we, we are able to, you know, with our marketing um, uh, networks, our sales distribution networks, we are able to sell these things for these villages. So, that they, you know, we are uh, a launching pad for so much that we can do. And 
So if you ask me, um, yes, I, I didn't think of actually joining the, the business, the family business. When I was young, you always rebel against this thing, but circumstances led me to it. And then, you know, you, you create your own space and you create your own capability to do something and to make a difference. And, and I guess that's where I am now. Uh, Shia, you, you, you all were just voted in and is one of the most admired companies in Sri Lanka. Um, I, I'm just actually just reading the article that appeared in the Daily News. Uh, what went through your mind on the 20th of March when this pandemic stuck? You know, I mean, because you, you, I know your whole family, y'all are so, uh, you know, uh, focused to the business, so, um, you know, caring to the people around, uh, you know, it's a beautiful culture that you all have. So suddenly you get up and everything is closed. You know, well, what went through your mind here as the managing director of Manchi? Well, actually it didn't happen overnight. We could see this coming. And in fact, we were, to, you know, we were, we were talking about it, we were preparing for it, but nobody really knew how to prepare for a pandemic. I, I mean, and I, I remember I HR director, you know, when things were happening in China, she said, she wrote me this note saying, don't you think we should be looking at how Sri Lanka, how we are going to prepare for this? I remember telling her, but we don't know what's going to come. How do we prepare for something that we really, so we were having these conversations um, already and you know, we had to take it on the run. Um, and I must say, um, we have a fantastic team at, at CBL. Um, and I think our success in everything we do is this collective energy that everyone brings together. And um, that's, that's the thing also, you know, I, I think in life, it's very hard to go on your journey alone. Um, and having strong networks of people, whether it's in your personal life or um, in your work life, I think makes a huge difference to what you create. And what our team was able to do, you know, the first thing that people felt was fear, you, you know, because there was actually at that time too, uh, in the media too, there, there was a lot of messaging that was going on, you know, don't leave your homes, stay at home, you, you know, this virus is dangerous. So actually get, you know, giving that confidence to our, to our workforce, um, that was a total team effort. And, and, and we spent a lot of money in um, becoming COVID safe, um, physical infrastructure, mental, um, you know, counseling, um, various things that we had to do to make people feel safe. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't the aha thing. It, it, it was actually, it, it was a progressive um, culmination of things that had to get done, you know, and, and, um, and how do we react? How, how do we react to people's fears? And then once that part was established, then there were supply chain issues, you know, there were freight logistic issues. It, it's, and it's still ongoing actually. The pandemic aftermath is still not over. It's still ongoing. It's just that I think, like with everything, experience gives you tools and confidence to do things. So we have actually we have some of the similar problems that we had a year ago, or, or longer. And um, but we just know how to deal with it a bit better. And we've got new problems now. And and, and that's life, isn't it? You're on mute, uh, Ron. You're so right, Shia. You're, you're so right because last night I was watching CNN. I mean, 100 million people have got COVID. Uh, you know, and again, you have another wave hitting. So I suppose we have to start asking ourselves, what do we do to protect ourselves? Um, yeah, just want to come in from you as you're a World Bank Award winner from Women in Ma Management and uh, you know, the, it says that CBL group workplace culture, empowering women leaders uh, is, is, is important. Uh, Shia, what is your thought on this? 
uh, for instance, when uh, at an interview, you, you like to always empower women, uh, you want to bring the gender balance in, but then you also want to recruit somebody who has the correct skill set. Uh, uh, how would you handle such a situation? So, I mean, quite frankly, we always recruit the best person for the job. We don't look at gender when we are interviewing in that perspective, but how do we bridge and how do we give more opportunity to women? Now, that is something we are working on. So we encourage people, we've had instances where we've had women um, within our organizations say they want to try out for more male dominated positions and, and we enable them to do that when that happens. These are not large numbers by any means, but I, I think having an enabling organization, which makes where we allow women to feel that they can do anything they want is, is really important. It's also, I mean, I think having a culture that is accepting of women um, still, you know, um, top management in most companies, in most organizations, in most committees uh, do tend to be male dominated, especially in manufacturing related businesses. But it's changing. I mean, I've seen it change um, in some of the committees I sit from 10 years ago to now. And I, I think it is that enabling culture that we need to keep working on. And um, we also have, um, so what we find is uh, at a management 20 level, we take in a 50-50 men and female ratio. But when it goes higher up the ladder, you find there are still more men in senior management. So we have a, a middle manager um, development program in our organization, as well as a senior manager. And, and through these um, kind of actions, we try to encourage more women to participate in, in higher, higher roles. Sure, what was it when you were appointed as managing director, uh, working into the company, um, taking over leadership in, in one of the large organizations of it, uh, from one side you are an owner, uh, and from another side you are a leader. Uh, uh, do, do, what was it like as a, as a, as a, as a female taking over? So, you know, I'd worked in the organization. Um, so I think I took over in 2011 as, as managing director. And I'd worked from since 1991 in the organization. So it was, it was really weird. I remember, the, so when I changed my office and I sat on that chair, I felt really overwhelmed. Despite knowing the business quite well, I suddenly realized that when I sat on that chair, um, the buck kind of stops at you, whereas before that accountability wasn't really there. And so there were areas, for example, that I felt in, in the business, I, I wasn't quite, you know, so comfortable with. And that kind of, actually I had, almost, you know, almost had fear, I was overwhelmed, and it took me actually a, a couple of months to settle down to understand despite being working, I mean, I was on the board, I've been working in the company for so long, I knew everybody, but um, yeah, it, 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 it was, it was um, there's a lot of emotions going through that. And then like anything, and what I'd like to share with, with the, the MBA students is in life, it's, it's a confidence that you have and confidence comes with knowledge. You, you, you know, if you don't know something, you need to learn it. And, and that's just what it is. And, and that's what happened in those couple of months for me to get my footing in this new role was, I had to adapt to it and I had to understand it. And, and that, that was it. Sure, uh, what was the most difficult decision you had to make as a managing director? Why, 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 I mean, that you never ever thought that you will have to do this, but you know, now 
as you say, the buck stops with you. So what was that key decision that uh, you like to uh, tell these MBA students, listen, I, I, you are never ever ready for a job. As Steve Jobs says, you know, you're never ready. You, you sit on that chair and like you very rightly said, how you matured yourself up to it and you just did it. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a local situation of how you really lived up to that, those words that he said when he was, you know, uh, you know he, that sometimes you're not ready for a job, but you do it. What is the th most toughest job that you do? So look, there, there are always hard decisions that need to be made, um, not pleasant ones, but I, I can give an example of one that um, made me feel very bad and uh, for, for various reasons. Um, we've been, um, you know, wanting to get into retail, CBL, I've been wanting to get into retail for a while. For, for a short time, we were partners, in, um, the private sector partners for Sathasa. And um, that was our first foray. Then, then we came up with this idea of having independent retailers on their brand called Star United. But I think we didn't get everything right. We made a lot of losses, a lot of problems. Uh, and uh, the board said, look, this is not going forward. And I, I had to agree with them. It wasn't, you know, we, we were way in what we knew and um, we had to close it. Uh, we tried to absorb as many people into our existing businesses. We had to let some go, but you know, we lost, we lost money. Um, and I, I, for me, it was also a, a personal challenge. It was something that I was very involved in. And um, I, I felt, you know, I, I'd let everyone down. And, um, and so I'll take it a little bit further and sh share with you how it became an opportunity. So soon after this had happened, I was actually um, going for a bike ride with a friend. And we were in the car trying to get into our destination. And this was fresh in my mind, so I was talking about it. And I was telling him, look, um, this is, you know, I'm feeling so bad about all, all of this. And, and I was saying, you know, we fashioned this whole, our whole concept was fashion on this, um, after spa. Um, and I just had this very random conversation. Uh, he's an investment banker. And um, a few weeks later, I, I, he calls me and says, look, if you're interested, I have a telephone call with the, the, mark, the, div, the director of development of SPA. Would you like to talk to him? And you know, that was then became from a journey of absolute despondency. Suddenly I, I had this conversation, which, which we spoke for about an hour and it was a really good conversation, which we took it further by meeting in person and, and so on. And that what then became the, you know, that despondency became an opportunity to really create this new venture that, you know, that, that was, it, it took several years um, from the time we actually spoke to SPA to actually come here because they, they were having really burnt our fingers in retail. We wanted to make sure that if we were going to try it for a third time, it was going to work. And, and um, so that was really, uh, a story of, I think, if you believe in something, I always believed the concept that we had was right. It's just that we executed it wrong. And um, going after what you believe in and networking is so important. Random conversations are so important. I, I have a lot of examples in our business where I've had conversations with people which have turned out to be opportunities in, in business, you know? So, you know, everything around you really is an opportunity. What you see, what you hear, and it's up to you to harness it. Um, I mean, I, I, I shop at uh, Spa, and I tell you, it's a fantastic experience. Uh, I remember even uh, last year when the COVID struck, um, you know, how people's temperature has been checked, how the hand washing happens, and uh, making sure that the mask is on before you go into the supermarket chain, uh, sure, it, it, it's a, it's it's amazing. But I suppose, you know, when you put your mind into something like you very rightly said, 
uh, you you might sometimes fail, but you again pick up the pieces and and then you also have a beautiful picture that emerges. You know, I, I, uh, I suppose those are the kinds of uh, lessons that education never teaches. Uh, so yeah, I remember once at an interview, you said that you love reading. Uh, how, how does, how does uh, your reading help in the job you do currently as, as managing director? You know, to be quite honest, I, I don't read as, as much as I should. Um, and when I'm talking about reading, I, I'm talking about spending time on reading. Um, now, I, I tend to read articles. So sometimes in the evening when I have time, you know, random articles, things that I want to learn more about. Um, you know, the internet is a fabulous source of information. And, you know, spending some time browsing on, on subjects that you want to learn more, that you want to get, you know, to get ideas from. Um, it's, but I, I, I think it's also important to, I mean, I used to read books a lot more, which I don't now. And part of it's lack of lack of time, I guess. But I, I, I disagree there as well. You have to make time for everything you want to do. So um, there's so much information out there for everyone, you know. And it's not that you have to just grab information into your head. It's, it's just what, what interests you. And our world is changing so fast. And I think if we don't want to become, you know, dinosaurs, we also need to understand the new lingo. Um, for example, for me, cryptocurrencies and blockchains are uh, new lingo, but it, it's, it's very much a part of our world and I want to understand it, you know, and I think it's important to understand because that's going to be a big part of business to come. So, for example. So, uh, Shia, what, what, I mean, I know that you love wildlife also. Uh, you make time for wildlife. I see you taking photos of leopards. I'm, I'm, I'm going through your Facebook. So uh, what, about, what happens? Like, do you like say, okay, I'm going to go to wildlife, but I'm also going to visit a few retail outlets on how the availability of my product is. I mean, do you visit the retail outlets also to see uh, the reality of how the things are working? I mean, how does it go? Absolutely. Actually, because of COVID, our interaction um, going into outlets um, has, has really come down, to be quite honest, market field visits. But I think at the end of the day, in any business, your customer is first. And our customers, our, our, our first customer is our retailer. So we need to understand, you know, what the issues are, what can we do? So what we have done this year is we, we had a, we tied up with the IFC to have a program to enable um, women actually uh, to enable more female distributors um, come into the foray and to educate our distributors overall on how you know the importance of running a, a good tidy business expose them to you know fundamentals of management of stock keeping of finance so it's, it's been a very successful program and Again, there, there are customers. It's essential to be in the field. Like, and I think we encourage not only our marketing and salespeople, we encourage everybody to go in the field because whether you're in production, even if you're in production, it gives you a very different perspective if you understand your customer's mindset. I remember my very first field trip in 1991 when I joined, we went to PETA. Um, CBL was a, you, you know, we weren't, uh, market leaders by a long shot, but, but then we were a number two biscuit brand and everyone only spoke about the competition. Um, and it was such an eye-opening experience to me because we are very proud of what we do in-house, but when you hear someone's perspective, another perspective, it, it, it makes you question. So, okay, maybe you're not so great. Maybe we need to improve this and we need to do that. And it's, it's very important to get your customer feedback. A very interesting question is coming from Gayan. He works at Brandix. He's the marketing manager. He says, Madam, uh, it's great to see a lady uh, driving such a large business. Um, 
a fully rounded exposure of uh, working, working, reading, and thinking. If you had to lead this country tomorrow, what's the first thing you will do? <laughs> Probably solve the forex problem out. <laughs> Um, look, okay, on a, on a more serious note, um, I think there are several areas um, that we could do differently. One is education. Um, I, I think, so I, I got this information, which I didn't know, that there are only, I, I think, I hope I get the numbers right, and forgive me if the numbers are, are, are wrong, but something like 200 schools that feed students into universities, for example. Um, and, and that's why this grade five scholarship at, at, at you know, this tender age of 10 or 11 years old, but the age they take the scholarship, yeah. you know, it, 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 it changes their future. And I think for a child at that age, it's too much. So that's on education. On agriculture, I would have a strong agriculture policy. I, I feel, Sometimes it's so frustrating because alone you, you cannot do it. And it really has to be a national strategy of what are we going to do with this country's agriculture? What are we going to be good at producing? And we, are going, and we should be the best. And there's no reason why we can't. Um, instead, we still, you know, a lot of what we do is what we did 100 years ago. The agriculture modernization program has been really slow. Um, in this country. And um, there lies opportunity, you know? I mean, there is so much that we can do. Um, yeah, so I, I don't want to keep going on. Is that sufficient? <laughs> yep, uh, I'm getting a WhatsApp message. Uh, it's from Ruth. She's doing a master's. Uh, she resides in seashells, uh, Shia. She's doing online. And uh, she works for the environmental ministry at the government of government of seashells. And she says, um, I know that you love agriculture from what you say. Uh, what do you think of the policy of going organic? <laughs> so, to be quite honest, I like to buy organic when, when I can. I support small farmers who try that. Um, but it's a journey, um, and a small country like Sri Lanka, where we have small farmer holdings, you know, when it comes to agriculture, um, we can't compete sometimes with, with larger countries which have larger um, land bases. Um, their um, cost of production gets it's much lower than ours. So these are opportunities. I, I, I think there is an opportunity to, to, to grow organic in Sri Lanka because we have the small land masses and we can control it more easily, but it, it cannot be done overnight. Um, we all know that it cannot be done. I mean, it, it, it's an absolute process. And you know what, what I've seen in the US where when you go to a supermarket in, in Sri Lanka, there's still a big price difference between organic and conventional, but in the US, the price is almost negligible. And that is because they have the techniques that are increasing yields. You know, th there are ways to do things. And um, I am all for less chemical usage, you know, more holistic food production, more sustainable food production. And, and this is what I'm saying. There's so much in agriculture. We, we need a, a strong national policy to, to take um, things like this forward. Question is coming from a guy, Didak. He's a second year student in the Staffordshire University MBA, Shia. He's saying, do you believe in, do you believe in free trade agreements? Uh, and, and do you feel that we should, as a country, use uh, uh, trade agreements to develop our foreign exchange reserves? I do. We are a small country with a small market. But when we, it's very important when we are negotiating these trade deals because we are, we are a small country. We are 
most often the underdog, that we don't um, destroy what little industry that we have in the country. So, so this is negotiation. Um, trade agreements are important. Today, and you can see the pandemic has shown this so well, we no longer can live in a cocoon. Um, you, you know, we have gone beyond using firewood um, to cook. So, you know, we have this very integrated global um, community now that, that, that trades. I, I mean, that's a fact of life. I don't think we can go back to the Stone Ages. So in that respect, we, we need to do something that is fair by all parties concerned. So to answer your question, yes, I believe in trade agreements, but I believe they have to be negotiated properly. Uh, question is coming from Ronki, who, who is working at uh, AOD. Uh, and, and she's saying, she's doing a master's actually. She's a first year student here uh, from Stafford Chair. And she's saying, uh, we, are, we are motivated to see a, a female in such high positions and, and the manner in which you, are, you, have, you go about things. Uh, how often do you reach up to your father for advice? A lot, actually. He, he has, um, he has, um, my father is, um, how should I say, he's, he's not the nurturing type. Um, he, he expects you to um, sink and swim. So uh, even as a small child, my first experience in a pool, I think he threw me into the deep end. And um, he was there to catch me, but he threw me in nevertheless. It, it was a rude shock. And even at work, it's very much been that. And one thing I, I really appreciate and, and what I've learned a lot from when I came back, he encouraged me to start my own business. Um, and and that, I think someone mentioned it in the, in the beginning, Modern Pack Lanka. We started with four employees. Um, he, he told me, look, we, have, we are buying these packaging materials from Singapore now. The, the supplier is a friend of mine. If you want, do a joint venture with him and, and start manufacturing these packaging materials in Sri Lanka. And so we did that with a, with a very small investment in 1994 with four employees, we started this. And um, I was, you know, in Ceylon Biscuits, at that time I was a manager um, in some department, but we had, you know, you had your finance or HR divisions. There were always specialists to do, but when I started my own business, I had to understand what all these things were about. I, I, you know, I, it made me understand the labor regulations. It made me understand the fundamentals of finance. I had to manage my finance. I didn't have a finance manager. Um, I just had a clerk who was working. And that was one of the best forms of education I had um, that gave me a really holistic, rounded, um, outlook to what it is like to run a business. And I remember the first time I had an issue with the supplier, they, they sent us faulty material, negotiating with that. It, it was a whole lot of skills that I learned um, running that small business um, that I did that working at Salon Biscuits. And then it, it, it's different. It was completely different. Yeah, uh, a very interesting question is coming. Uh, uh, it's coming from a guy called Yasir. Uh, Yasir, Yasir, Yasir is, is, is a student from uh, from UAE. Uh, he works for a he works for a large uh, retail chain there, and he's saying uh, from all your experience of working in different departments, which particular function do you like the most? So actually, I like my job now the most, <laughs> to be quite honest, <laughs> um, because I can I can create. I like um, I think I I um, like to start new ventures. I, I like to do new things. Um, so right now that it gives me the possibility to do that. I, I mean, I've been in product development. Um, I'm, I'm a technical person. I, I just love doing new things. Um, so just to share with you. 
during COVID, I got together with a friend of mine um, and we were thinking, look, you know, we need to produce more. We need to have more value added agriculture. And we, we came up with a concept um, that we thought we could add value using herbs and spices. And it took about a year to develop. We, we roped in two other partners. And this is quite apart from CBL. This is something I, I like to think we did it. It's, it's almost therapeutic. And um, we, we just launched this product called Gourmet Twist um, it, it, um, on last Thursday. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's a cold chain product where we want to bring flavors of the world to Sri Lankan kitchen using all Sri Lankan raw materials. Because at the end of the day, the rest of the world gets all their requirements from countries like ours. And they have all these interesting products in their countries. And our thinking was, why can't we do that here as well? So, you know, it's, I, I love creating stuff. And, and, yeah. and that's what I'm doing. Sure. Where do you see this company in the next 10 years from now? I think we can become a, a global company. Um, we have strong brands. We have strong functional capability. And uh, we, we, have a lot, I mean, we have a core strength there, which can be a platform for us to, to leap into other markets. Uh, your last question, Shia. Uh, I mean, there are a whole heap of questions, but I'm just picking one of them. Uh, it's from a lady, Dilini. She works at MAS in Tuliria. Uh, she's uh, uh, finally a student in MAS uh, from the university. And she's saying, uh, apart from working and your hobbies, how do, do you work out and how do you, uh, how do you maintain a healthy life? So um, I, I love yoga. I've been doing it for quite a while now. I've become more serious about it in the last few years. Um, I have an excellent guru. I think that makes a difference as well. Um, and that I, I think physically, um, has been physically and mentally actually completely rejuvenates you. Um, when I can, I, I also try. It's not as often as I would like, but I, I, I try to med meditate. Um, and that, I, I think, you know, people throw this word stress. And I, and I like to think now that I'm much more aware. And the, the whole thing about being stressed is you create your own stress. So if you're aware of that and don't absorb it and learn how to not absorb it, it's easy to say don't absorb it, but sometimes it's not so easy. It's learning and I, I, I'm on this journey of just trying to do that. So I don't absorb it, but really work at it rather than absorb it. So, um, and I also think having good friends that you can have a good laugh with is so important. Um, lately, you know, we, we go through life you're young, you, you have lots of friends and then you start having children and then you become busy and then and it's come to then most of us have grown up kids. So we have a little bit more time um, really uh, to spend with others. And I find myself catching up more with some of my childhood friends now. And um, who, you know, we had big gaps where we, we haven't really been in contact. And it's just so nice um, sometimes to be with people who, you know, known you since you were so young and then there's no judgment and you can talk and I, I think to be able to have people that you can talk to it is, is a we are very lucky to have that I, I have to take this question uh, Shia uh, it's coming from Udara um, he's saying um, he's also one of the master's students and he's saying um, How does the question go? Yeah. Thank you, Madam, for taking your time off to share for us to understand more than education, uh, what, what we could learn from people like you. Uh, my question to you is, after you have finished your studies, uh, have you ever been to 
uh, executive education to get yourself uh, updated. And uh, should we also look at that maybe another five years or six years time once I finish my master's? Look, I think education um, is everywhere. So actually I enrolled the, this, you know, before the pandemic to go on one of these um, executive um, programs to Harvard. And then it just so happened, my son's A-level exams, he had his papers fell during that exact one week period. And I opted to give that opportunity to somebody else. And I stayed back for my, for my son, but I think it's important. But I think it's not only that, you know, when I go to conferences, um, when I go, you know, when you go to trade fairs, um, to me, everything is a learning um, opportunity. Uh, the people you meet. Um, I, I believe, actually, I believe you, you learn every day. It is something that you do constantly. And yes, going to executive programs, it refreshes you. Um, it, it, you know, it, it gives you a space to think which you don't normally allocate. Um, so I, yeah, I, I believe it, it's important that you do that. Yes. Shia, thank you so much for spending your time uh, on a set of youngsters. And I really appreciate, I know you're really, really busy. No, uh, not but if, before, you, before you sign off, um, if I go back to Shia at 21 years old, is there anything different you would do at the age of 21? What advice would you give young Shia at 21? Uh, just starting out, uh, maybe maybe not 21, maybe at about 24 after finishing. Yes. You know, what would you do different? You know, to be quite honest, I, I, I don't know what, you know, because I, I think your life is a journey. Um, and as I said, you, you come to crossroads and it's about, but what I, what I have learned is, um, you know, I, when I was young, when I was younger than 24, when I was in school, I was very average. I, you know, I never applied myself too much. I, I was, you know, in, in the, you know, tennis team, but I was in the B team. I was an okay student, but I, I didn't excel in anything. You know, I would take part in this, but most often it was, I didn't really apply myself. And I feel I, I lost a lot of opportunity that I, I could have really, at a much younger age, maybe I could have really exposed myself to, to much more, to, to leadership. I wasn't interested in leadership at that age at all. But then this is on hindsight, having gone, you know, having many years <laughs> uh, added on, you, you can think back and say, well, I could have done that better. Um, but I've also come to realize that life is a journey and it's, it's never too, too late to, to change direction or to look at something you want to do. And I, I mean, sometimes, as I said, I, I, I enjoy what we do, but there are always opportunities to do things. And, and there have been people who have, that I know in my, you know, who are close to me have taken big life-changing decisions. And I think they're so brave, but I think that all stems down to you having the confidence in that, what you want to do. It's not, it's not the action really, it's more about you believing in yourself and what you want to do. As a gentleman, Shia Vikrama Singh, uh, Group Managing Director of Ceylon Biscuits Limited. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really beautiful to have you as our first guest for the year 2022. So much of uh, optimism, uh, I mean, uh, I, the kind of vibe that you gave Shia, I think is going to help youngsters a lot because all what you see is so much of negativity, whatever news channel that you listen to. So uh, Kaushali, over to you. Thank you so much, Shia. Thank you. Thank you very much, doctor. And thank you so much, ma'am, for that enlightening words that you shared today. And the message goes out to all our students today. Believe in what you do. 
And I'm sure that will be the core message that you can take home as this new year starts, as we continue to enhance the knowledge and of course enhance the skills and expertise in all our students, not by using just books, but of course through these important interactive sessions as well. So with that, we come to the end of our first session for the year and we will continue to have this learning journey with all of you and hope to see you back again in another week's time. Until then, do take care and good night from Sri Lanka. Thank you, Shia. Take care.